with us now to talk more about this is Diana Boudou, a former advisor to Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas and a former lawyer for the Palestine Liberation Organization. Thank you, Diana, for being with us this morning. What are your thoughts on this hostage deal? It's sad that it's taken so long to get to this point because this was something that Hamas had actually put forward on the first days but was rejected by the Israeli authorities because they decided instead that they wanted to pursue military action rather than uh, actually addressing the underlying cause of all of this. The only reason that it's happening now is because there's been so much pressure that's been brought to bear on the Israeli government by the families of these Israelis. And I think it's important to bear in mind that there are more than 7,000 Palestinians who are languishing in Israeli prisons and many of these people who are going to be released are people who shouldn't have been held in the first place. They're people who have never been tried. They've never been convicted of any crime. Many of them are under the age of 14. These are women and children who Israel has used for many, many years as bargaining chips in order to exert pressure on Palestinians. Deanna, you're telling me that 150 of the people that are going to be released in exchange have not had any judicial oversight? have never been dealt with through the Israeli judicial system? Many of them, indeed. Uh, there is a system inside Israel that's called administrative detention. And what it is is that a person can be picked up and held without charge, without trial, um, for as much as six months, and their detention renewed every six months indefinitely. Many of the people who we've seen on the list, and they have been releasing these lists, are people who are in these conditions as well. I think it's very important for us to recognize that, that unfortunately, the only system that has worked in order to get people to be released is international pressure. And there has been no international pressure brought to bear on Israel for all of these years that it's maintained this military occupation. Yeah, and I mean, the only system that work is as a consequence of this deal today, and we're talking about the 22nd of November, we're talking 47 days after Hamas went in, surprising many, including Israeli security uh, and intelligence, and carrying out a massacre, the largest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. 1,200 men, women, and children killed, and 239 or 240 people taken back over to Gaza. I I'm just wondering, what is it that can in any way justify that? What I'm trying to get you to see is not a justification, but an analysis. And the analysis is that for Palestinians, they've lived under this military rule, a very violent system now for 56 years, not one day, it's for been 56 years. And unfortunately, the international community, including and especially the United States, has abandoned Palestinians. There are rules that exist under international law, and unfortunately, Israel has never abided by them. And the U.S. has never forced Israel to abide by them. As a result, we end up seeing Seeing that people resort to violence. This isn't a question of people wanting to be violent, but that that is the only way for people to end up getting prisoners released. It's the only way for people to attain their freedom, and it's the only way to, to that, that we can actually see any sort of change. As, as, as you have said, there have been there was violence perpetrated against Israelis. There's been massacre after massacre after massacre before October the 7th and post October the 7th. And if we don't recognize that, that is really the height of dehumanization to somehow expect that Palestinian lives don't matter. They do. And this is why I think it's so important for us to be pushing forward, for us to be demanding a ceasefire, and for us to address the root cause of why it is that this situation is the way it is. Why is that Palestinians are still not free in the year 2023? And looking and forward, what is the possibility of anything, anything positive happening in the future? Two-state solution, no two-state solution, the uh, Palestinian Authority involvement, the Palestinian Authority not being involved, uh, Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia, Cutter, what do you see as any possibility? Right now, I think the main focus has to be on stopping the bombing campaign, because the bombing is not just a bombing. It's the bombing of it's killing lives, but it's destroying infrastructure and it's forcing people to flee. Again, that is illegal under international law. From there, I think that's where we have to pick up and we have to demand that the world do better. 
We've spent all of these years with the world just somehow accepting that it's okay for Palestinians to live under Israeli military rule, and it's not. People want their freedom, and they deserve to be free. Where it is that the ultimate formulation is up to Palestinians to decide. But to continue to live under Israel's boot is not a, it's not a recipe for success in the future. It hasn't been a recipe for success in the past, and it certainly won't be a recipe for success in the future. So if it lies only with the Palestinian people, and we have seen the history of that region, and it's bring it back as far back as you wish, uh, Deanna, what is the possible solution? Look, there are a number of them, but the first and foremost, it requires that we actually give Palestinians their rights rather than have Palestinians live under Israeli military rule. You know, 75 percent of the Palestinian population was kicked out of their homes in 1948 in order to make way for the establishment of Israel. This is why Palestinians are languishing in refugee camps. It's time for us to recognize what the root cause is and start to address it. And from that, I think something good can come. But unless we, but if we continue along this path of somehow prioritizing Israel and deprioritizing Palestinians, we're never going to get to any positive space. Yeah, and also the recognition of Israel's existence and the possibility to exist must be in that conversation as well. The problem is, is that the idea of the existence is that Israel's never recognized Palestine's right to exist. There's always been a demand on the part of the world that Palestinians recognize Israel's right to exist, and they have, by the way. Um, but there's never been a reciprocal demand on the part of Israel to recognize Palestine's right to exist. That's why we see so many settlements go up in the West Bank. This is why we see these repeated bombing campaigns on the Gaza Strip. It's because Israel have, believes that it has an exclusive exclusive right to the land of my of my ancestors and that as a result that it has an exclusive right to kick everybody out who is not Jewish we must end this formula this is not a, fo a formula for for future peace it must be ended and we must address the root causes and the root causes are the fact that Palestinians have been kicked out of their homeland for 75 years thrown into refugee camps and told that they just have to deal with it that's again not a recipe for for future success